We have already mentioned the Master Apprentice method in week two in the context of revival that is not reclamation. It was pioneered by linguist Leanne Hinton at the University of California, Berkeley, who had been working with a wide range of Native American languages spoken or in some cases remembered or documented across California. In many cases, she was working with the remaining handful of aging fluent speakers of languages such as Karuk. It is a difficult proposition to ask an elderly speaker to come into a school classroom and teach children when they themselves are not trained teachers and in some cases may never have had an opportunity to attend school themselves. Even if they were able to teach their languages in a school setting, will this really ensure that their language continues into future generations? Probably not. What is more effective and more lasting is to ensure that highly motivated young adults who are themselves owners, custodians of the language, gain a sound knowledge of and fluency in their language. This is achieved through the master-apprentice approach. A young person is paired with an older fluent speaker, perhaps a granddaughter with her grandmother, and their job is to speak the language with each other, without resorting to English. It doesn't really matter what they do, they can weave baskets, go fishing, build houses or fix cars together, so long as they speak the language with each other. The master-apprentice approach has been taken up in British Columbia, in Canada. In Kununurra, in northwest of Australia, trainers from California, including Leanne Hinton and Karak woman Crystal Richardson, have travelled to Australia to share their method and their experiences with a range of participants. Several sets of parents from various language groups have made a major commitment to ensure that their, la their children are raised as speakers of their language by homeschooling their children in their ancestral language. In 1991, parents Darrell and Karen Baldwin set about raising their four children as first language speakers of Miami through homeschooling. These children are now the first native speakers of Miami in recent times. In language reclamation contexts, there are no fluent speakers, so a different approach is needed. We saw in week four how the formulaic method can be used effectively by exploiting code switching and by progressively introducing the language in well-formed utterances, in conversation where many or most utterances might be in English or the dominant language, Chinese, etc., especially in the early stages. The training of language workers and language teachers is also a very important element of successful language revival, so that owners, custodians, speakers are empowered to run their own programs and teach their own languages. In South Australia, Marianne Gale has developed adult education certificate courses, Learning an Endangered Aboriginal Language, and Teaching an Endangered Aboriginal Language, accredited through the National Technical and Further Education, or TAFE, system. There are now graduates of these courses from several different language groups, including Ghana, Ngarndri, Wurrungu, Adnyamatna, Naranga, and Pitindara. The courses have also been taken up by other registered training organisations interstate, notably in New South Wales and Victoria. The Resource Network for Linguistic Diversity, or RENALD, also offers training through the Documenting and Revitalising Indigenous Languages, or DRILL, program, offering workshops to a wide range of language programs across Australia since 2010. Songs are a wonderful means for learning languages and have a central place in many language revival programs. Song is a good mnemonic device. In fact, song is often the starting point, as it was for the Huron in Quebec City, and as we saw for Ghana. Song and performance, as introduced by Edgar Makapili, his wife Uma Talavan, and their family, also played a central role in early efforts to revive the Saraya language of southern Taiwan. Fija Byron, an accomplished Okinawan revivalist, uses music to teach Okinawan, the northern Ryukyuan language spoken primarily in the southern half of the island of Okinawa, located in southern Japan.